Update after update. That's what the Blue Origin CEO has been delivering continuously over the past few days. Yet despite the frequent updates, nothing has changed. New Glenn has neither flown nor even been tested. Recently, Dave Limp provided yet another explanation for the ongoing delays. What exactly happened and how will these setbacks impact Blue Origin's future? After that, we'll take a closer look at the successful return of Dragon CRS-31. So with that, let's dive into all of this in today's episode of Great SpaceX. It has been about a month since New Glenn was transported to the LC-36 launch pad for hot fire testing, yet no such test has been conducted. This period could easily be described as one of the most uneventful months for Blue Origin. Despite the anticipation, the company appears to be stuck in a holding pattern, offering various explanations for the delay. On December 8th, Dave Limp revealed that they were waiting for regulatory approvals, though no progress in this regard has been reported. Adding to the confusion, on December 6th, Blue Origin's CEO announced that the company was preparing for a wet dress rehearsal instead of proceeding directly to a hot fire test. According to the CEO, the WDR would take place first, pushing the hot fire test further into the timeline. For context, a wet dress rehearsal is generally one of the final steps before a launch. During this test, the rocket is fueled and systems operate as they would on launch day, except the engines are not ignited. It is a gentler process compared to a hot fire test, which involves firing the engines at full power while the rocket remains stationary. This decision raises questions about New Glenn's readiness. Why opt for a wet dress rehearsal before a hot fire test? Typically, the sequence would involve completing the more rigorous hot fire test first. Choosing a gentler test could indicate concerns about the rocket's reliability, especially since this is the first time BE-4 engines have been integrated into New Glenn. A hot fire test carries greater risks of exposing vulnerabilities such as excessive vibrations that could damage the vehicle or launch infrastructure. Any issues discovered during a hot fire test could delay subsequent testing significantly. Adding fuel to this skepticism is the repeated vertical stacking and unstacking of New Glenn after its arrival at the launch pad. This back and forth activity suggests that the rocket may still have unresolved issues. The conflicting updates and shifting timelines from Blue Origin further exacerbate doubts about their progress. December alone has seen a flurry of announcements ranging from payload testing for GS-1 and GS-2 to the installation of systems on their drone ship. Yet none of these updates inspire confidence that a hot fire test is imminent. If the most recent claims are accurate, the wet dress rehearsal will occur during the third week of December. This leaves Blue Origin with only the final week of the month and the year to conduct a hot fire test. However, this already tight schedule is compounded by the need for FAA approval, which, as Dave Limp himself noted, is a complicated process. Even if approval is granted, it's unlikely the test could happen immediately. Given these circumstances, it's now almost certain that New Glenn's debut flight will not occur this year. Journalist Christian Davenport previously suggested that obtaining a license in December was feasible but tight. At this point, it's clear that launching in 2024 is impossible. This delay means that 2024 will mark yet another year in which Blue Origin fails to reach orbit, a glaring underachievement considering the resources and potential at their disposal. The implications of this delay extend far beyond the New Glenn program. Missions like NASA's Escapade Mars mission, which has strict launch windows, could face setbacks. Additionally, issues with New Glenn's second stage for subsequent flights further highlight the rocket's lack of readiness. This domino effect could disrupt other high-profile projects, including launches for the U.S. Space Force's National Security Space Launch Program, Kuiper satellite deployments, and even preparations for Artemis V. The inability to meet these obligations tarnishes Blue Origin's reputation and raises concerns about their capacity to compete with more established players like SpaceX. The lack of meaningful progress is particularly disappointing given the initial optimism surrounding New Glenn. At the start of the year, Blue Origin appeared poised to make significant strides. Jeff Bezos himself signaled a renewed focus on the company with public announcements and visits to Blue Origin's facilities. These gestures created the impression of momentum and ambition, yet as the year draws to a close, the results are underwhelming. This ongoing stagnation casts a shadow over Blue Origin's future, even before New Glenn has attempted its first orbital flight. 
For a company with such lofty aspirations, the dream of reaching orbit seems increasingly out of reach. At this point, one must wonder, when will Blue Origin finally launch New Glenn? Leave your predictions in the comments and don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to keep up with SpaceX's incredible progress. While Blue Origin falters, SpaceX continues to redefine what's possible in space exploration. Let's stay tuned to see how the competition unfolds. SpaceX is continuing to outpace its competitors, making significant strides while others lag behind. Recently, the company completed static fire tests for the S-33 hardware slated for Flight 7. The first test, involving six engines, occurred on December 15th, followed by another single-engine test on December 16th. With these key milestones achieved, Flight 7 is drawing ever closer, setting the stage for more groundbreaking achievements. While Blue Origin's new Glenn remains grounded with no test flights in sight, SpaceX is preparing for its next major Starship mission, which will focus on version 2 operations. This highly anticipated flight will include another controlled landing of the Starship in the ocean, along with the second attempt by the Megazilla arm to catch the Super Heavy booster. Following this mission, all eyes will turn to the ultimate challenge, catching both stages of the Starship system. SpaceX has targeted early next year for this critical milestone, a move that would mark a historic step toward full reusability in space exploration. The stakes are high and the excitement is palpable. Will Flight 7 launch before New Glenn's debut flight? Cast your vote with a simple yes or no in the comment section down below. Looking ahead to 2025, SpaceX has ambitious plans to dramatically increase its launch cadence to as many as 25 Starship flights. Initially announced earlier this year, this goal was postponed but has resurfaced in discussions with the FAA. In November, the agency acknowledged SpaceX's revised proposal to ramp up Starship and Super Heavy operations at Boca Chica, Texas. More recently, the FAA confirmed plans to host public meetings in January, two in person and one virtual, to address potential environmental impacts related to this proposal. The timing of these meetings is strategic, allowing decisions to be finalized early in the year. This would give SpaceX ample time to pursue its goals if the proposal is approved. The odds of success appear favorable, as the FAA is undergoing significant reforms to streamline its processes, while SpaceX enjoys robust support from both industry and government partners. With these developments, SpaceX is poised for a transformative year in 2025. Key objectives include achieving full reusability, mastering orbital refueling, surpassing 400 launches within four years, and advancing missions to the Moon, Mars, and beyond. These milestones will solidify SpaceX's dominance, leaving slower competitors struggling to keep up. On another front, SpaceX recently completed a significant milestone with the return of Dragon CRS-31. After undocking from the International Space Station at 11.05 a.m. on December 16th, the Dragon capsule successfully splashed down off the Florida coast at 1.39 p.m. Eastern on December 17th. This mission carried thousands of pounds of equipment and experiment samples from microgravity research conducted on the ISS. Once again, Dragon demonstrated its unique capability to return valuable cargo to Earth, setting it apart from other vehicles in operation. While Northrop Grumman's Cygnus and Russia's Progress spacecraft can transport supplies to the ISS, both are expendable and primarily used for waste disposal during re-entry. Only Dragon offers the ability to retrieve useful materials from the station, making it indispensable for scientific and operational support. Following its return, NASA and SpaceX will recover the Dragon capsule to transport its cargo to NASA's Systems Processing Facility at Kennedy Space Center, where the materials will undergo further analysis. The CRS-31 mission also played a vital role in supporting ISS operations. Launched on November 4th, it delivered 2.7 tons, or 6,000 pounds of cargo, to the station. These resupply missions are especially critical given recent challenges, such as the extended stay of astronauts Butch Wilmore and Suni Williams on the ISS due to delays with Boeing's Starliner spacecraft. Dragon's successes continue to accumulate. The next resupply mission, CRS-32, is scheduled for March of next year. Meanwhile, SpaceX and NASA are preparing for Crew-9, a crewed mission set to launch in February. This mission will include two astronauts originally slated to fly aboard Starliner, highlighting SpaceX's reliability and adaptability. Beforehand, Crew-10 is expected to launch to facilitate a seamless transition of duties with Crew-9. SpaceX's contributions to ISS operations are unparalleled, underscoring the limitations of Boeing's troubled Starliner program. 
It's been months since any meaningful updates on Starliner, and the prolonged silence raises questions about the spacecraft's future. With Jared Isaacman set to take over as NASA Administrator next year, it's plausible that he might phase out a vehicle with such a poor track record. Or in a more humorous twist, one could imagine Starliner waiting to hitch a ride aboard Blue Origin's New Glenn for its debut flight. If this unlikely scenario brings a smile to your face, feel free to drop a laugh emoji in the comments section down below. In the end, the contrast is clear. SpaceX is not just advancing its own capabilities, but reshaping the future of space exploration, while others struggle to keep pace. And on that note, thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.